In the first part of this video series, I made it clear that the visual inspiration will be Pokemon for the Game Boy and, in particular, Pokemon Crystal, which is the version where Game Freak perfected the formula. Johto is probably my favorite region and the one that inspired me to create visually rich and colorful contemporary environments, both rural and urban. In GB Studio, each scene requires a background PNG image with a minimum of 160 by 144 pixels, the screen resolution of the Game Boy. The backgrounds are divided into tile sets of 8 by 8 pixels. Both the length and the width of a background must be less than or equal to 2040 pixels. The background image could not contain more than 192 unique tiles of 8 by 8 pixels at the same time due to memory limits. This means that even if you use the smallest possible background size, you have to repeat more or less half of your tiles. The first version of Pine Creek, made in GB Studio 1.0, could not yet use the color capabilities of the Game Boy Color, so I did it with only the four shades of green allowed in mine. The graphics were made using a sprite, which made the process much more comfortable than using other tools. Even so, it was a constant battle to achieve the amount of detail that I wanted for the game, considering not exceeding the tile limits and the limits of my own artistic skills. GB Studio 1.2.0 added color palette support for the Game Boy Color, and that's where I learned about the differences that each screen display and emulator have to represent the temperature and saturation of color. When GB Studio 2.0 finally added the color option, I immediately got to work on the DX version of Pine Creek. The way GB Studio handles colorization is through a menu of 7 palettes of 4 colors to use on each of the 8x8 pixel tiles in the background, the same for the sprites and the UI. Altru, it will be much easier to color the backgrounds directly from a sprite, using this workflow you can create a game that looks and is compatible with both the Game Boy DMG and the Game Boy Color. That said, when adding color to certain backgrounds, I faced some tiles that had to be redone, since the limit of 4 colors per tile was not enough. Here are some examples of backgrounds that changed after the transition to the DX version of the game. As you can see, I had to sacrifice details in favor of more color variety. It was also not easy to choose colors for the DX version of Pine Creek. I wanted a colorful world that would visually attract the players, and then juxtapose it with an obscure plot and surprise them. Maybe many will argue that the color palette should follow the tone of the story being told, but I can't choose obscure tones and graphics when what I want is to play with many styles. Thank you for watching this series, and a huge thanks to our patrons for supporting this project. You're amazing. You can gain access to exclusive content and stay up to date on everything I'm working on by becoming a patron. In upcoming videos, we'll discuss music and sound effects and publishing a Game Boy game. Until next time.